in Richard Delman, I can see. <laughs> You read it? Do you want us to start? Please do, yes. yes. Your Worship, councillors um, and other, other uh, council staff, etc. The last time I spoke to the council was in January 1998, when the former Prime Minister Mike Moore and I made a presentation to the council to support a bid to bring the Winter Olympics to the South Island of New Zealand, something you shouldn't forget about. The genesis of a National Sports Museum of New Zealand commenced in the 1980s when I was chef de mission of most of the New Zealand teams at Olympic and Commonwealth Games. During those games, Lord Porritt, former Governor General of New Zealand and IOC member and of the film Chariots of Fire, where he was bronze medalist in that famous 100 metre race at the 1924 Olympics, would turn up in my headquarters and I always had a bottle of whiskey on hand for him. And we got started then talking about a potential national sports museum for New Zealand. So it goes right back to the 19, 1980s. After the earthquakes of 2011, in Christchurch I felt there was an opportunity to initiate this project as a part of a new infrastructure of Christchurch and then establish the Charitable Trust of the National Sports Museum Trust of New Zealand. To date we've already received many letters of support for the project from Te Papa, Ngai Tahu, prominent New Zealanders, New Zealand sporting heroes and educationists. This is a huge opportunity for the country to have this facility to showcase our sporting history and magic in a bicultural and multicultural way and why the small country of only 5 million people competes so well with the rest of the world. The museum needs to be in the inner city, city and preferably in the cultural precinct or adjacent to the town hall so it is accessible in relation to other major attractions. We have had several years of frustration and lack of information waiting to find out from council staff exactly what was happening with the multi-use arena. But seating capacity limitations indicate we anticipate there would be insufficient space under the grandstand for the estimated 7,000 square metres of space we need. <coughs> the, the, uh, the sketch you, you, I think, got with you has been produced by our architect Richard Delman and shows our proposed National Sports Museum with a space of 5,000 square metres above the ground and 2,000 under the ground. Additional storage space will be required in due course. The estimated cost, we think at this stage, with construction costs in the range of $6,000 a square metre, and with fit-out will be in the region of about $75 million. We want to also establish an International Sports Research Institute, and we invited the University of Canterbury to consider uh, organising that as a part of what we want to do. And also the Sports Hall of Fame have expressed interest as well. Where to from here? To date we've had talks over the years with the Government, Sport New Zealand, Council officials, the Australian National Sports Museum, but until today we have not gone public with this project. We need to raise immediately the 56000 needed for a full feasibility study and we need funds to pay our architect and other consultants so they can progress more working drawings for the project once we find a suitable site. Once we have the feasibility study, we'll then commence talks with the government, city council uh, and surrounding districts. To commence a national public appeal, we would expect a number of the charitable trusts in New Zealand to support such an appeal as ours. We'll even be looking at low mortgage rate monies to be repaid from future appeal proceeds in an endeavour to counter escalating costs of construction that have adversely affected infrastructure costs in this country. I would now like to refer to our design team. We've got Richard Delman on my left, the principal architect. We've been wor working with a person who did the rugby museum um, in Palmerston North on some of the interior works. And we also have Yun Yung Fu, a young Christchurch person as an honorary architectural consultant. Now, he recently has been the top student in architecture at Harvard University. He's just completed a Doctor of Design at Harvard University and been lecturing there and he is very supportive of the project and how he thinks he can help us. Uh, that is my time probably but I'll pass on to Richard Delman. Thank you. Thanks Bruce and uh, thank you with Mayor and councillors. So look just a very quick um, rundown of the design of the building. We've, we've, we've um, uh, you can see it's quite a dynamic building, just as sport is dynamic, uh, it's grounded um, with some stone in the bottom right hand corner, just as our athletes are grounded um, and representing the, all the training that we do. Um, inside we have very high spaces for um, static and um, dynamic displays uh, and 
but uh, we've, we've tried to create something that we thought would be uh, quite an iconic building and something that would be um, well recognised, but also has, uh, would have large windows as well, so that can be, it would have quite a bit of community engagement um, and a large entrance and perhaps a silver fern canopy entrance. So uh, that's the design of the building in 45 seconds. Thank you very much. I'm sorry that there isn't a lot more time. I mean, there isn't time for um, for questions. But um, very much appreciate you coming along and making the presentation. I'm not unaware of the um, desire to have a, a national sports museum, and um, so it's good to have the submission uh, presented here today. So thank you very much. Good. Thank you. Thank you.